As we know, flights do not always go as planned, especially when flying at the will of ATC. That is why it is so important for us to be familiar with how to manage the flight planning features of the GTN effectively and efficiently. Initially loading a flight plan is a great start, but how about when ATC amends our route and we need to divert for weather? In this lesson we'll cover direct to navigation, how to edit a flight plan, using the nearest function to locate close by resources, and finally, utility tools that can be used to make vital in-flight decisions. The direct to function on the GTN is used anytime the pilot wishes to proceed from their present position directly to any waypoint in the navigation database or to a user waypoint. This function only provides single point direct to navigation, meaning that additional waypoint sequencing is not provided beyond the selected point. Anyone who has flown with GPS before is likely already familiar with the direct to function. This navigation feature is a very useful tool and one that will likely be used in the majority of flights. However, it should not be your primary flight planning tool. There are essentially two ways Direct2 can be used, en route and off route. An en route Direct2 is any time you wish to proceed from your present position direct to a waypoint that is currently in your flight plan, but that is not your current active waypoint. As you might have guessed, an off route Direct2 is when it becomes necessary to navigate from your present position to any waypoint that is not currently part of your flight plan. In either event, to initiate a direct to, first press the dedicated direct to key on the right side of the GTN bezel. From the direct to page, we have three methods for selecting our direct to waypoint. We can manually enter the waypoint identifier, we can select from a list of waypoints in our active flight plan, or we can search from a list of the 25 nearest airports within a 200 nautical mile radius. Once we have the desired waypoint displayed on the screen, select the Activate key in the bottom right corner, but only when we are ready and cleared to proceed. As soon as the Activate key has been selected, the GTN will begin navigation to that waypoint. Once a Direct2 has been activated, the GTN will disregard the flight plan until that Direct2 has been cancelled or a leg of the flight plan has been activated. We'll cover activating legs in a little bit. Let's look at our planned route to Garden City. What if while performing the Plane 7 departure between the Denver VOR and the x intersection, ATC instructs you to proceed direct to the Goodland VOR? We know that Goodland is not our active waypoint, but that it is in the flight plan. We will select the Direct 2 key followed by the Flight Plan tab at the top of the window. Select the line for the Goodland VOR and select Activate in the bottom right corner. You can see on the map page that the active leg has switched and has drawn a line between the aircraft's position and Goodland. In addition, at the bottom of the map is a bar that indicates the active flight plan leg. Before programming the Direct 2, this bar indicated Denver VOR, x intersection, and then Thurman VOR. Now the Direct 2 symbol appears, followed by Goodland, and then the next waypoint in the flight plan, Wilva. Let's go to the flight plan page. A shortcut built into the system is the ability to jump from the map page to the flight plan page by selecting the CDI bar at the bottom of the display. Before programming the Direct 2, a Magento staple connected Denver to Xtan, indicating that this was our active leg. Now we see a single Magenta arrow pointing to Goodland. These indications on the map page and flight plan page will help to indicate to the pilot what the active leg is. Now let's say instead of a direct to Goodland, ATC has instructed you to proceed direct to the Akron VOR for a weather deviation. We are likely to receive additional reroute information from ATC requiring extensive flight plan amendments. The easiest way to initially comply with this ATC instruction is to program an off route direct to Akron. Select the direct to key. Select the waypoint field and type in the Akron identifier AKO using the keypad. Now select Activate to begin navigating to the new waypoint. Similar to the earlier example, we see a magenta line drawn on the map page connecting our aircraft position to the Akron VOR. The CDI bar also indicates the direct to Akron. Notice, however, that there is nothing listed after Akron. This indicates that we have programmed an off route direct to and that waypoint sequencing will cease upon reaching Akron unless our flight plan is modified to include Akron. Going to the flight plan page, 
we also see that the active flight plan title has been replaced by the Direct 2 Akron symbology and that no flight plan leg or waypoint is currently active. There's one more feature of the Direct 2 I'd like to point out. When we program a Direct 2, we have the ability to define our course to that waypoint. For example, ATC instructs us to fly a heading of 360 degrees to intercept the 270 degree radial to Akron. We would begin by selecting the Direct 2 key and entering Akron as our waypoint. When the Direct 2 is first entered, a Course 2 is automatically populated by the system connecting your present position to the waypoint. Since we were asked to fly the 270 degree radial to Akron, we would use the reciprocal and enter a course of 90 degrees. Selecting Activate will allow us to fly the heading assigned to us by ATC and to intercept the correct course to our selected waypoint. Instead of a magenta course drawn from our position to Akron, a magenta course appears along the 270 degree radial leading to Akron. This feature can prove to be very handy when flying complex departure procedures and through busy airspace. This requires careful flight director and autopilot mode considerations. Improper mode selection and procedures may result in undesired results and course deviations. The CDI bar on the GTN 600 series is located on the default nav page. You can achieve the same shortcut to the flight plan page by selecting the active flight plan leg bar on the default nav page. As we know, it is not unusual for ATC to provide route amendments and diversions for several reasons – weather, traffic, emergencies. When this occurs, it is important you know how to most effectively and efficiently edit your flight plan to ensure you properly comply with instructions and, of course, maintain safety in flight. Now that we know how to create a Direct 2, we'll take a look at how you would handle some more common amendments to your flight plan, including how to insert and remove waypoints, delete or store a flight plan, and graphically edit your flight plan on the map page. Building off the previous example, while performing the Plane 7 departure, ATC provides the following reroute. Proceed direct to the Akron VOR, Goodland, and then is filed. We begin by creating a direct to the Akron VOR. Now that we are established en route to Akron, we can edit our flight plan to reflect our new clearance. Navigate to the flight plan page. The clearance we received from ATC indicated we must proceed to the Goodland VOR after crossing Akron. In order for the GTN to provide sequencing from Akron to Goodland, we must place AKO into the flight plan. To insert a waypoint, first locate where the new waypoint will be entered into the flight plan. In this example, AKO must be placed between the Thurman VOR and the Goodland VOR. The Waypoint Options menu gives us the option to insert a waypoint before or after a selected waypoint. Since Goodland was specifically mentioned in the clearance, we will select GLD from the flight plan and choose Insert Before. Enter Akron for the waypoint identifier. We can also use the Find icon and select AKO from the list of recent waypoints. Now that AKO is placed in the flight plan, we will automatically receive guidance to the Goodland VOR after crossing the Akron VOR. Other ATC route amendments may require that you remove a waypoint from the flight plan. We can take our example one step further. While en route to the Akron VOR, ATC amends your route again and instructs you to proceed direct to Garden City Regional after crossing Akron. The easiest way to accomplish this is to remove the Goodland VOR and Victor 17 from the flight plan. Select the Victor 17 title bar in the flight plan and select Remove Airway. Now all that remains is the Goodland VOR. Select GLD from the list of waypoints and choose Remove from Waypoint Options. Now, after crossing the Akron VOR, the GTN will provide guidance direct to Garden City Regional. Additional options for the flight plan are available through the menu key on the flight plan page. We've already used the preview feature to review the flight plan entered in the GTN. Additional menu options include Store, Delete, Invert, Parallel Track, and Edit Data Fields. The Store button allows us to save the active flight plan into a catalog so that it may be recalled and used again in the future. 
select the Catalog button to activate a flight plan that has been previously stored in the GTN. Delete clears all of the data in the active flight plan. Note that the active flight plan is automatically deleted when the GTN is powered off. Invert allows the pilot to reverse the waypoint sequence if you would like to fly the reverse route. Inverted flight plans do not include terminal procedures such as departures and arrivals. Parallel Track creates a new route offset from your planned route by a defined distance. This feature is used in rare instances and should only be used when cleared to do so. And finally, Edit Data Fields allows you to change the three data columns displayed on the flight plan page. There is another method for modifying the flight plan which utilizes the touchscreen functionality on the map page. The Graphically Edit or Rubber Banding feature of the moving map allows the pilot to modify the flight plan directly from the map page. This feature can be very convenient when it becomes necessary to route the aircraft around a certain geographic area or hazard, such as airspace or weather. To edit the flight plan on the map page, first engage Pan Mode by touching anywhere on the map. Select the Graphically Edit Flight Plan key in the bottom left-hand corner. In this mode, you can both insert and remove waypoints into the flight plan by selecting the flight plan leg with your finger and using a drag and drop type motion. The selected leg will change to a cyan color. If a mistake is made while editing the flight plan, select the undo key in the lower left corner of the map. You may also add waypoints to the end of the flight plan. To do this, touch on any waypoint on the map to extend your flight plan to this new waypoint. If you select an area with multiple waypoints co-located with each other, the GTN will prompt you to select from available waypoint identifiers. When all of your edits have been made, select Done in the lower right corner to confirm the changes and exit edit mode. All changes performed on the map page will also be reflected on the flight plan page. I recommend practicing how to use this feature on the ground several times to understand its capabilities and true application in flight. In addition, it is suggested to practice several scenarios requiring you to edit the flight plan so that you can become proficient with the different techniques available. The use of a safety pilot and instructor is suggested when first becoming familiar with these procedures. In addition to the airport, VOR, NDB, and intersection waypoints contained within the Jeppesen Navigation Database, the GTN allows the pilot to create their own waypoint. The user waypoint feature of the GTN provides the pilot with the ability to define any point in space and store it in a database so that it might be recalled at a later date. A user waypoint location can be defined by using either latitude or longitude, two radials off two separate reference points as long as those two radials intersect, or by using a single radial off a single reference point and defining the distance from that point. In addition, it is possible to select a point on the map page. As long as no other waypoint exists at that point, you may create a user waypoint right from the map page. There are many different reasons to create a user waypoint, and depending on the instance, one method for defining the position will likely work better than the others. One very good example of when creating a user waypoint is helpful is when ATC asks you to fly one radial to intercept another radial. Oftentimes, this point is defined by an intersection in the navigation database, but this is not always the case. Sure, you can use the nav radio and tune each VOR and specify the radials to fly inbound and outbound as necessary. But by using a user waypoint, all the work can be done ahead of time by placing this new intersection into the flight plan. Let's say that approaching Akron VOR, ATC instructs you to fly the 090 degree radial outbound to intercept the 345 degree radial inbound to the Goodland VOR. To effectively perform this clearance, your first action would be to create the user waypoint. From the home page, select the waypoint info icon. Select Create Waypoint. The user identifier is how the waypoint will be stored in the database. The pilot can define this identifier or allow the GTN to provide it with a sequential number. Up to 1,000 waypoints can be created, starting with USR000 and ending with USR999. Next, select Position Type. The GTN will initially default to a position of radial or distance matching your present location. Based on the clearance, we will use the radial radial. We will specify the two reference waypoints as AKO and GLD. Next, we will define the radial for each of the references, 090 for AKO and 345 for GLD. The user waypoint can be stored under a temporary status. 
This means that the waypoint will automatically be erased from the database when power to the GTN is removed. This is nice when the waypoint will likely only be used in this single instance. Select the Create key once all of the parameters have been set. Now that the waypoint has been created, you must insert it into the flight plan. Navigate to the flight plan using the information we discussed earlier. You will insert the user waypoint into the flight plan between Akron and Goodland. Now after passing Akron, the GTN will sequence you to the user waypoint along the radial defined by ATC before proceeding to Goodland. This is only one example of how to use this feature. Think of other ways this can be useful during flight, such as for defining a holding fix. Finally, with software version 5.10 or higher, it is possible to import one or multiple user waypoints into the GTN from an SD card. When a waypoint is stored to the SD card and the card is inserted into the GTN, the waypoint information page will provide a key to import waypoint. After selecting this key, press OK to acknowledge that you want all user waypoints to be imported into the GTN. The created waypoints will be at the latitude and longitude specified in the file with the specified name and comment. Whether it's searching for an airport during an emergency or locating nearby weather information, the nearest function can be used to inform the pilot of their surrounding resources. Accessed from the home page, the nearest function provides detailed information for the 25 nearest airports, VORs, NDBs, intersections, user waypoints, and automated weather frequencies within 200 nautical miles of your current position. In addition, you can find the five nearest air route traffic control centers and flight service stations and information on any controlled or special use airspace you may be near or in. Let's say, for example, you needed to find out what airports were closest to your position. You could select the airport key. The list of nearest airports displays the airport identifier, bearing and distance to, as well as the longest runway and its best available approach at that airport. To go one step further, you can select the identifier for each airport and jump to the waypoint information page for more detailed information regarding that waypoint. Select the back arrow once to get back to the list of airports and again to get to the nearest page. Each list generated under the nearest function provides similar bearing and distance information. For lists that provide frequency information, such as VOR or ARTCC, the frequency field can be used to auto-tune the frequency into either the standby comm or nav radio. If you select the frequency box 115.10 for the Goodland VOR, you will notice it auto-populates the standby nav window. Take note how the reverse lookup feature displays GLD VOR beneath the frequency. Let's say you are having trouble contacting ATC while en route to your destination. You can select ARTCC from the nearest page to display all the nearest center frequencies within 200 nautical miles. Select the first Denver frequency box, 132.50, to place this into the standby comm window. The reverse lookup feature also enunciates Denver ACC below this frequency. When a facility has more than one frequency, multiple frequency is shown in the frequency tab. Select this box to display all frequencies for the station or facility. The nearest function is one that I take advantage of almost every flight. When multiple displays are available in the cockpit, configuring one display to show nearest information greatly enhances a pilot's ability to maintain situational awareness. As a final note, the nearest airport page can be configured to exclude shorter runways or undesired surface types. Airports that do not meet a minimum runway length and or runway surface will not be shown on the list of nearest airports. To specify these values, Select the system icon on the home page. Select Setup. Under Nearest Airport Criteria, you may specify what runway surface your aircraft requires and what the minimum runway length must be. Take careful considerations at what minimums you specify. Setting a minimum runway length too high may remove viable options in an emergency situation. As in-flight conditions change, such as route, weather, and aircraft performance, it becomes more and more important that the pilot has the necessary information to make the right decision, ensuring the aircraft and its passengers reach their destination safely. Accessed through the utilities icon on the homepage, the GTN has two utility functions that provide much of this necessary information 
to make these determinations. Trip planning and fuel planning. Trip planning allows the pilot to select a route of flight and will display distance, desired track, and en route safe altitude, and the sunrise and sunset data for the destination waypoint. Using the aircraft's ground speed as determined by the GTN itself, or as manually entered, the trip planning page will also calculate the estimated time en route and the estimated time of arrival. Using the speed input, the calculated trip statistics are determined by defining a starting waypoint and an ending waypoint. Trip planning can be set to one of two modes, point-to-point -point or flight plan. Point-to-point -point will provide trip statistics between any two waypoints within the navigation database. When using point-to-point -point mode, the starting waypoint can be defined as the aircraft's present position by selecting the PPOS field, creating a theoretical direct to. Flight plan mode allows you to select from any stored or active flight plan and will provide the same statistics for either a single leg within a flight plan or for the entire cumulative route. Perhaps while en route we notice that our ground speed is significantly lower than what we had planned for prior to departing Rocky Mountain Metro. You are concerned about reaching the destination airport before one hour after sunset because we do not meet night currency to carry passengers. Using trip planning, we can determine our new estimated time of arrival. To do so, we would first select the mode field to toggle the flight plan mode. Select the flight plan field and choose the active flight plan from the list of available routes. Select the leg field and choose the cumulative option from Rocky Mountain to Garden City at the top of the list. Since you want to use the current ground speed as determined by the GTN, select Use Sensor Data so that the green bar at the bottom of the field is eliminated. The departure time and date data fields are automatically filled in but can be adjusted as necessary by the pilot. Now that all the information has been entered onto the page, we can see our new estimated time of arrival and that we will still arrive prior to sunset. Fuel planning is a function that will calculate fuel conditions based on route, ground speed, fuel on board, and fuel flow. The fuel statistics provided are fuel required to destination waypoint, fuel at destination waypoint, reserve at destination waypoint, range in nautical miles, efficiency in nautical miles per gallon, and endurance in hours, minutes, and seconds. Identical to the trip planning utility, the leg or route for which this information is desired must be defined using either point-to-point -point or flight plan mode. We will also see that we have the ability to use the GTN ground speed or to enter this value manually. The fuel on board and fuel flow information is the same data as entered on the instrument self-test power-up screen, only decremented to account for elapsed time. You may also adjust these values as necessary to account for changes in performance. Once all of these necessary values have been filled and the flight path has been defined, the fuel statistics will fill in. Let's look at an example of how we can use these two features together. While en route, a cold front moves through the region sooner than forecasted, dropping the ceiling lower than originally forecasted at Golden City Regional. Current forecasts indicate that weather conditions may not allow for a safe landing using the lowest landing minimums available at Garden City. It has been determined that the closest airport with VFR weather conditions is Wichita Dwight D. Eisenhower, approximately 175 miles to the east. Going to the trip planning page, we program the following information. Mode is set to point to point. The starting waypoint is our present position and the destination airport is KICT. Our current true airspeed is 175 knots and we know that we will encounter a 10 knot headwind by flying eastbound, so we will manually set our ground speed to 165 knots. Based on this information, we now know that our estimated time en route to Wichita is just under an hour. Now we go to the fuel planning page. With all of the same data entered in on the page, we see that our total endurance is 1 hour and 50 minutes, leaving a fuel reserve of just over 45 minutes. Based on this information, you decide to divert to Wichita immediately, ensuring enough fuel for multiple approaches if necessary. Perhaps the most anticipated feature included in software version 6.0 is the addition of user-defined holds. User-defined holds allow the pilot to program a holding pattern as assigned by ATC directly into the flight plan or over a direct to waypoint. The user-defined hold feature allows you to define the holding fix, the course to be flown, the direction of the course to be flown, whether it's inbound or outbound, the turn direction, leg type and duration, and finally, an expect further clearance time. For example, while en route to Garden City, ATC provides the following holding clearance. November 234 Golf Lima, 
Hold west of the Yannick intersection on the 270 degree radial, left turns, expect further clearance 25 minutes past the hour. Since Yannick is already in the flight plan, we would first navigate to our flight plan page and select Yannick from the list of waypoints. The waypoint options list now appears slightly different with the addition of hold at waypoint. Select this option to program the holding procedure according to your clearance. We see that the course to Yannick along Victor 17 is already programmed into the course field. Since ATC has asked that we hold on the 270 degree radial, we can either enter a course of 270 degrees and set the direction to outbound, or set the course to 090 degrees and the course to inbound. Change the direction of turn by selecting the turn field until left turn is indicated. Since ATC did not specify a hold type, we will leave the leg length to the default of time legs at one minute. A leg type can also be set to distance and the duration expressed in time or distance can be specified by the pilot. Finally, we will set the EFC time to express 25 minutes after the hour. Select load hold to place a holding pattern into the flight plan. The holding pattern can now be seen on the map page and waypoint sequencing will provide guidance throughout the holding pattern. Just prior to crossing the holding fix, the GTN will enunciate the type of entry to be performed and the initial course to be flown in the bottom right corner. Once established in the hold, waypoint sequencing will suspend indefinitely as indicated by the SUSB or suspend enunciation at the bottom of the GTN display. When you've reached your EFC time, the message icon will begin to flash and the messages page will display current hold EFC time expired. Once clear to the next waypoint in the flight plan, select the unsuspend key on the map page and upon completing the active turn and crossing the holding fix, waypoint sequencing will resume. This can also be accomplished by selecting the hold line in the flight plan and selecting exit hold. Lastly, if you are assigned to hold at a fix that is not within your flight plan, you may create a direct to course and program the hold at that fix. Begin by selecting the direct to key and entering in the desired fix. Select the hold field and program the hold clearance as we did before. Select load hold and direct to hold activate. This will create a direct to course from your present position to the fix followed by the holding pattern. This added feature makes receiving in route holding clearances and complying with them far simpler. It is suggested you create scenarios and practice using this feature to increase your understanding and efficiency.